Camera one, camera two. Hey guys. Hey guys, I'm Zach here. Welcome back to my channel. All that intro good stuff. I figured we'd do something a little different today and I will chat with you guys while I'm drawing. It's been a while since I did a video like this. So we're gonna see how it goes. May not go very well. <laughs> I'm thinking of starting this new series where I design characters based off of flowers. And uh, so I guess today will be the first episode. I'm going to create a character based off of poppies. As you can see, I've already done the sketch. Sorry for totally not videotaping that. I usually like doing sketching before bed, so I didn't do that. But as you can see, I kind of made her a little small in comparison to the paper. So... I'm gonna just trim it down so that it looks correct because who wants to erase things and like redraw them? That's that's a lot of work. <laughs> that looks about right, I'd say. Now it's a little bit over five inches by a little bit over seven inches. So now I'm gonna start on the line work. And I'm gonna be using my Tombow Fudensuke or Fudensky calligraphy pen. Let's zoom in my camera a bit. So yeah, like I said, I'm thinking about making this into a little bit of a series. I wouldn't do it every like week or on any actually particular schedule, but every once in a while I will do a video like this where I sort of chat live. And you guys can actually kind of draw with me and I can talk about what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Pulling a Mark Crilly, as I like to say. Mark Crilly was one of the very first art channels I started watching back in 2014 when I was just learning how to draw. He helped me a lot. And he always did his videos like this, where he draws and talks at the same time. And I was thinking about giving her like fingerless gloves, almost like those gloves that you use for digital drawing. I don't actually have one, but it might be kind of cool. I think it goes like over the thumb, a little like this, something like that, maybe. Hopefully that'll look cooler when I <laughs> uh, color it in right now. I don't know. I don't know, guys. She has a pretty toned tummy. Oof, I don't know if that looks good. What do toned abs look like? No idea. Never had a, like, a six pack. It's a shame. <laughs> and I had this idea of giving her these Hakama inspired pants. I love Hakama pants. I just love the way they look. They're so cool. So they have this like big slit going down the side and she has maybe like some booty shorts on. Cause otherwise that would be a little bit, um, out there if she didn't have any like shorts are on underneath. I made myself a pair of Hakma pants. They weren't like super traditional or anything. I gave them just like six pleats, I think. Um, but it's great, yo. If y'all have never put on Hakma pants, it's so airy and so comfortable. Once you get the hang of tying that belt, it is the best thing ever. That line is, I don't, I'm not happy with that line. But it's all right, you can't be happy with every line. <laughs> so, what is your guys' favorite flowers? Let me know in the comments. My favorite is actually daffodils. They've been my favorite flower since I was very young. Um, but I do really like poppies as well. I just really like simple flowers. I don't like those flowers that have like so many blossoms and there's so much going on. Poppies are really cute because they're just like this cup, this red cup <laughs> with a little black dot and a little skinny green stem. Now I'm going to actually sketch in those poppies in a little better. I usually like having pretty loose sketches for things, but this is a little, a little too loose even for my standards. 
Oh, I just realized my camera was too zoomed in this whole time, wasn't it? I'm so sorry, guys. I'm horrible. Petal is going to be on this side because this petal is like going on this side. So this one should go this way. Gives it more of a symmetrical look. This is my, it's the way my brain works. And we have a couple of ones that are just, just budding. And also just a couple of grass, grass things. And she's going to be kind of standing on just like a floating grassy thing. There we go, that's a little better. Go back to the line work now. I love doing line work. I used to not really like it because it kind of gave me anxiety because I didn't have a very steady hand. But after a lot of practice, it's now become something that I really like. It just feels really smooth and... And I actually, that's like my favorite part to edit when I look back at the footage. I love editing the part when I'm doing the line work because I'm like, hey, that looks pretty aesthetic. as always if you guys ever have any questions for me just post them in the comment section i am always happy to respond to any questions help anybody out if you have any troubles also if you like this video and you like this theme of drawing girls or boys maybe i'll do some boys in the future um, but just characters and outfits based off of flowers let me know and uh, if you have a flower you'd like me to make a character off of, let me know in the comments as well. Maybe I'll do your favorite flower. Now we have our little budding, budding buds, our buddies. <laughs> Look like little olives, olives growing on pieces of grass. You know, I drew this piece of grass straight, but I want it to bend. Gotta go with whatever you feel at the moment that's that's what art is all about talking like bob ross now <laughs> Now I'm going to erase my pencil lines underneath. You know, the only drawback I feel of doing videos like this where I narrate while I'm drawing is it's kind of a pain to edit because you have to line up the audio and the video in the program. And now that I have two cameras, it's gonna just be especially weird, but we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. All right, now I'm gonna tape this down. I'm just using some masking tape. Get my masking tape. My masculine tape. <laughs> Where have we gone with this? That's about the right size. Now I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife. Very sharp, very dangerous. So it's actually kind of loose too, that's bad. And just cut out a little bit of this masking tape where it's covering the drawing. And I'm probably gonna label this video something like real time drawing or something like that because I'm kind of drawing in real time, but undoubtedly I've trimmed down the video, so I'm sorry if that sounded a little clickbaity, but honestly, I really don't feel like posting like an hour long video. Sometimes it's cool to watch, sometimes it's fun to just like have on in the background while you're drawing, but I don't know. Ooh, did I rip the paper? I'll just cover it up with some more ink. All right, got time to go change the water. And fresh water. So now I have my dirty water and my clean water. My table- oh! <laughs> so now I'm gonna get my paints. My Kuretake Ganzai. 
Garataki Ganza. I still haven't swatched these paints on this thing like you're supposed to. Uh, to activate my paints, like to get them wet, I actually like to use a water brush because it's always clean and it's really easy to just like squeeze it out. So that's what I use. I'm not really sure which red I want because once again, totally did not swatch these paints. So I'm just going to activate all of these reds, all of it, all of it, all of it. Now I don't have a piece of watercolor paper to test things off. I can use this little strip. Oh look, I actually cut some of it off. All right, let's see, let's pick one. Ooh, that is nice. Let's try one that's a little bit warmer, warmer red. Oh, that's really nice too. Mm, that's pretty nice. It's like blood. <laughs> yeah, I'll kind of like mix them together. Now that we have our bloody strip of paper, we're just gonna jump into painting, because that's what I do. I like just jumping into things and then like hyperventilating when things are like not working out <laughs> the way that I want them to. Oh my god, my camera wasn't on. My camera wasn't on that whole time. Oh, so sad, so sad. Thank goodness I have two cameras, huh? I want to paint her pants first, so that's what I'm gonna do. This brush is so split. <laughs> But hey, that doesn't matter. I will struggle. That's fine. Ooh, I got some on her foot. That's bad. I don't care. I mean, I kind of do care. I don't like when things go wrong. I really don't. And yet I set myself up for disappointment because I use things that always go wrong. Here, let's get a better brush full so it's nice and wet. There we go. And we're just gonna do like a nice wash of this color. I want this to have a really nice kind of very clean simple look because that's the feeling I get from poppies. Now that I did my wash of that warm red, I'm gonna put in a little bit of this cool red to spice things up. This brush has seen better days. I really need to replace it. Um, but all the craft stores are like closed right now, so I can't really like walk in and get a nice brush But the other day when I was stocking up at, um, on supplies at Walmart I did pick up a little pack of some cheap brushes, which I know it's like oh cheap brushes not so good But at least they're new so hopefully they won't be as split as this one already is I think this one's gonna have to get downgraded officially to just masking fluid application brush yeah, why don't we open that brush pack and get one of those out because it's a little hard to deal with. Here it is. <laughs> uh, this is some Royal Langnickel. It was like $2 for four of these brushes. This is a number five round. Feels pretty snappy. Now I'm gonna do her skin. Man, I have to mix my colors. I'm gonna have to mix my colors to do the skin. So let's see what we want. Maybe get some of this orange and then some of this like red, which is like almost orange. I really should get like a ceramic plate or ceramic mixing dish because plastic mixing dishes, not so fun. Let me tell you, always beads up the, the color. Hey, it's all right. It's all right. Let me just see how that looks on, the little, on our bloody strip of paper here. All right, it's pretty mustardy. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this orangey red to it. Hopefully that will make it more of a skin color. I don't know, it's just looking like orange. Maybe if I water it down, I should change the title of this video to Watch Me Struggle With Color Mixing. That's not so bad. Should we put some yellow? Yeah, sure, why not? Let's put some yellow. <laughs> Honestly, I think I'm just gonna really water this down and that will be my skin tone. And pray for the best. Let's, let's try this, let's try this. Oh gosh, it's really orange. Oh, I'm scared. Oh no. When it's really watered down, it looks pretty all right. All right, it seems to be drying pretty all right. It looks pretty good. Now I don't really want to paint her clothes because her skin is still wet, so I'm afraid it's going to bleed. So instead I will do her hair. For her hair, I'm just gonna get some brown, I guess. I'm gonna take this brown as the base coat, and then I will put some... Actually, this is a really nice peachy skin tone when it's pretty watered down. Could've just used this. <laughs> then I'm gonna grab a little bit of purple, 
I just kind of put it in there in hopes that it looks good. I wish I had like a hair dryer on hand so I could like just dry things out much faster. Now I'm going to do the forbidden, which is I'm actually going to use black for her clothes. Oh my gosh, never use black. Don't you ever, don't, don't you dare. But I think if I'm just a little bit careful with it, it may look pretty cool. Yeah, that's not so bad. Oh, red alert, red alert, red alert. I shouldn't have done that. I should have just let it dry. Oh. Aren't you guys glad I made this video so you can like see the struggles that I go through every time I paint? It's a whole ordeal, my friends. I love red and black as a color combination. I think it looks so cool. All right, well, that's all like drying. I think I'll start working on these poppies because they seem pretty far away from the character. Minimal risk of bleeding. I love filling things with just solid color. So, so satisfying. That looks pretty pretty. I'm coloring in these poppies opposite than how I did her pants. I, on her pants I started with the warm red and then put the cool red on top. And the poppies I'm doing cool red with the warm red on top. Now, why am I doing this? Now that I've done the poppies, I think I'll move back to painting this girl's pants. I'm gonna put like a warm purple color as the shading. This, this seems like a safe area. If the color is totally wrong, it won't affect too much of the painting. These are the things I pay attention to, people. Oh dear, is it cauliflowering? Oh great, no, it's all wrong. I'm so bad at painting. I go through all of these existential crisis crises while I'm painting every single time, pretty much. And camera one has run out of battery. All these things always happen when I'm doing videos live. I don't know what I'm doing. I love how you can't even like notice it on the camera, but in person I'm like, oh my god, it's a disaster. Put some of that purple in her hair. I'm gonna actually take a little bit of blue and I think when this dries it's gonna look pretty bomb. Ooh, I spilled some into her foot. Uh, just kind of building up these lines. Trying to get better at being smooth. Because I'm not very practiced with a brush. Not used to like having to point downwards. I think this area could have been a little less. I should probably just leave it, not mess with it. Unless we could maybe try this. Is that better? Is it better? I don't know. We'll see if the color flowers. We're going to take some more of this blue and I'm going to start shading in her little. Can we even call this a crop top? I mean, let's let's get real here. It's basically a bra. I just realized I didn't put the glove on her other hand. <laughs> Maybe we'll put it in afterwards. All right, now while that coat of stuff is drying, I'm gonna do a little green part. And I love the type of green that the poppies have. It's like this light green, I love that. I think it's so pretty. I think we have a color that will be exactly what I'm looking for right here, honestly. Because I do not want to mix colors. <laughs> That's why we buy a 36 set of colors instead of just six, which is kind of all you need, really. But I actually want the blades of grass to be a slightly different green than the stems for the flowers. So this way there's some diversity in our greens and in our, in our grass, you know? Grass isn't all just the same kind of green. Hmm, not bad, not bad. I think it goes. It picks up the blue in her pants and stuff. Now isn't this green really making this piece look so pretty? All right, let's take a nice warm yellow. Just kind of let it bleed into all the, the stems and stuff. It just makes it look nicer, less artificial. Later on, I'm gonna put some more color in the background so that she's not just in this white void. 
It's getting kind of dark. I'm also getting hungry. I will fill in these little these little dots here before we head to the kitchen to munch on various objects. <laughs> so for the center, I'm going to take some purple. And then I'm going to take some black. And just kind of let it bleed into the purple. Why not add some pur some freaking what's the name? <laughs> Why not add some yellow as well? Let's just take some and let it kind of commingle together. Take a little bit of purple, a little bit of black, and a little bit of yellow. And hopefully when that dries, it will all look like proper poppy centers. <laughs> so I will see you guys tomorrow, which is going to be in like two seconds for you. So bye. All right, it's day two. Hi, welcome. <laughs> so I did do a little bit of like thumbnailing on my computer last night. Maybe I'll show that on the screen. And so just to get the idea of what kind of colors and stuff I want to put in the background. So this is the fun part. I'm going to take my bigger brush. This is the biggest watercolor brush I have. It's a number 14 round. And I'm going to wet things down a little back there. It's probably going to lift up some of the color. Take some yellow. And let's just put it on back there. Then what I'm going to do is after I put this yellow back there, I'm going to try and put some blue. And that will mix together and make a nice green. That is pretty vibrant. Because I think I want it to be a little bit more on the yellow side. So let me take a bit of a warmer yellow. Mix that in and see what we get. I find that one of the best skills you can have as an artist, and it's one that I am not very great at, <laughs> it's color mixing. Because a good color palette will take you a long way, even if your other fundamentals aren't that wonderful, even if like your anatomy isn't that great, if you make a well-composed illustration and the colors work together, that will make things look really beautiful, even if other parts of the painting are lacking. But on the flip side, if you have great other fundamentals such as anatomy, but a horrible understanding of colors, color theory, it can actually make your painting look pretty horrible, because the colors are kind of the first thing that we notice. But things like anatomy and proportions, unless they're really, really, really off, we really don't notice them until we stare at the painting for a little longer. Now, while all that's drying, I'm going to work out some more details on our character. I'm going to take my really thin brush. What is this? It's a number one. Number one round. Oh, I want to show you guys this. This particular color in the Kuratake Ganzai kit, which is the number 50, is very opaque. It's like almost straight up gouache. I know that the Kuratake Ganzai kit is uh, different than normal watercolors. The pigments are binded with a different uh, agent than normal European Western watercolors, which is why they have a different texture. Uh, most of the paints in this set are pretty opaque, but some are more than others, and this one is very opaque. And do see if I can do something that I love to do when I do digital work, which is add some rim lights. working pretty well. I'm also going to put some yellow with all this natural stuff around. It makes sense that she'd be out in the sun and sunlight, as we all know, is a little bit yellow. It's a really old trick that I used to do with Copic markers. Even if my character was just standing in a completely white void, I would make the highlights of the character yellow, and it just all of a sudden makes it look more alive. Because we very rarely ever see characters or anything in just white light. Usually if it's daylight or sunlight or something, it's a little yellow, maybe a little blue. see if I can carve any more shapes. I don't know, do I dare? Do I dare mess with the background anymore? I dare. I want to make the impression of a few more poppies in the background. Yeah, I don't know how that looks. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm not feeling it. 
And it's like it was never there to begin with. Should I put some shadow on the poppies themselves? Just a little here and there. I wonder what would happen if I took some purple to shade the green. Now purple and green are complements. If I'm careful and do not mix the colors too much or else it'll just turn brown. And I'll put some yellow down on the bottom too because we put yellow on the top. So why not put some yellow on the bottom? I almost forgot her necklace. It's just hanging here. I'm gonna take my lining pen again and go over some lines because these watercolors are pretty opaque. I think I'm gonna give her that glove on, the, on her other arm, on the other hand as well. Hope I don't regret it. This is a Faber-Castell India ink brush pen. This way I just can fill in her little black glove here without uh, having to pull out some more paint. All right, I'm gonna step away for a couple of minutes to let this last poppy dry and then I'll be right, I'll be right back. All right, it's, it's pretty much dry. I'm too impatient. <laughs> I'm not gonna wait until it's like 100% dry. And I just need to refill in those stems that are in front of that poppy so that it's not just like weird looking. Now, do we need to finish up with a little bit of gel pen? Why not? <laughs> gel pen makes everything better. Maybe put some detailing on her shorts. Looks like stitching. I think we're done. And are we ready for the ceremonial tape peeling? Oop. Uh, don't you love the one time where I'm doing this like live, my tape peel is, just doesn't happen, just doesn't work. Also this piece is not like 100% dry, so it's actually a pretty bad idea for me to be uh, peeling off the tape so soon, but I want to be able to show this painting before the sun goes down. I need to get some soft boxes. Ta-da! Alright, we have a finished painting. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. Hey, it's voiceover Zakira. Real time Zakira told me to uh, take care of the outro for this video while she wraps up. So thank you guys so much for watching and hanging with me and I hope you guys got some painting done yourselves in the meantime. If not, then watch this video again and draw something. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Be sure to hit that little bell and turn on all notifications so you'll know whenever I drop a new video. Also, if you have a moment, do drop a comment below letting me know what you think. Should I do more real-time videos like this? What other flowers should I make characters out of? What are your thoughts on grass diversity? If you'd like to subscribe to my newsletter, check out my shop, purchase my book or ebook version, all that can be found on my website zakira.com, link is in the description box, along with links to where you can find me on social media. Hope you guys are all having a wonderful day and I will see you soon. Until next time, stay awesome, stay inspired, always. See ya!